Election lawyer and Senatorial Betromi Makalintal says if President Rodrigo Duterte declares a revolutionary government, Vice President Lenny Robredo will replace him. Makalintal says once Duterte declares a revolutionary government, he ceases to be president having divested himself of the presidency. In a speech Thursday, Duterte threatened to suspend the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus and arrest all of his critics. And this is the first time I, I mentioned revolutionary government. They always do that to opposition. Uh, dictator, though, ako You know, I'm, I'm not stupid like them. But if you push me to the wall, then I do you how stupidity works. Eh, ganun lang. Makalintal adds declaring a revolutionary government is not a function of the president who is tasked to protect the constitution. The privilege of the writ of habeas corpus compels the state to present an arrested person in court and explain his or her detention. The 1987 constitution allows the president to suspend the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus in case of invasion and rebellion when the public safety requires it. Duterte had been talking about suspending the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus since the first few months of his term. Opposition Senator Sonny Trillanes challenges President Rodrigo Duterte to face illegal drug allegations against his family squarely. Trillanes makes the statement after Duterte accused him of being behind a viral video linking the president's son, former Davao City Vice Mayor Paulo Duterte, to illegal drugs. Malacanang dismissed the video as black propaganda while Paolo said it was an invention of someone who had an axe to grind against agriculture under Secretary Waldo Carpio, the brother of presidential son-in-law Manassas Carpio. Waldo was also linked to drugs in the video. Trillanes also reiterates his long-standing challenge to the Duterte father and son. He dared the president to finally take up his nearly three-year-old challenge to sign a bank secrecy waiver to prove he does not have any undeclared wealth. As for Paolo, Trillanes dares him again to show his back to disprove claims of a dragon tattoo. It is alleged that the name of the tattoo matches an alleged codename of a drug lord. The Philippine Statistics Authority says inflation or the increase in the prices of goods eases further to 3.3% in March. This rate falls within the target range of 2% to 4%. It is also the lowest inflation rate since January 2018. The PSA says the main drivers in the downtrend of inflation in March 2019 were food and non-alcoholic beverages at 3.4% and alcoholic beverages and tobacco at 10.8%. Economists of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas earlier said the cooling of inflation was due to lower prices of rice and other agricultural products. Despite the downward trend, the BSP Monetary Board kept the benchmark interest rate high at 4.75%. Inflation hit a nine-year high of 6.7% in October 2018, pushing up last year's average to 5.2%. The state-owned Clark Development Corporation issues a public apology to Philippine National Police Chief General Oscar Albayalde and his son. This is about an incident involving Albayalde's son Kevin and the head of CDC's Public Safety Division, retired Police Brigadier General Rom Rio Verde. On Tuesday, Kevin and his two bodyguards reportedly parked along the no-parking portion of the parade ground in Clark. The young Albayalde alighted from the car to jog and bike around the area. CDC public safety officers arrived and accosted the three men for illegal parking. At the office, Ver allegedly hurled invectives at the younger Albayalde, whom he reportedly mistook for a Chinese. When Albayalde finally introduced himself as the son of the PNP chief, Ver reportedly got even angrier that a foreigner was using the name of the PNP chief to evade legal responsibility. On Thursday, the CDC relieved Ver of his post as public safety division manager and appointed his assistant Robin Senzon as the officer in charge. Charges were filed against Ver and several officers including slander, grave coercion, unjust vexation, and direct assault. Musician and songwriter Raymond Marasigan calls out political hopefuls for unauthorized use of pop songs. Marasigan tweets, Whenever you hear an unauthorized, bastardized version of a popular song as an election jingle, please don't vote for that candidate. They've stolen already and they haven't even been elected yet. This is not the first time an artist called out politicians for appropriating original music for their campaigns. During the 2016 elections, Phil Scapp said the unauthorized use of songs in campaign jingles is a violation of the intellectual property rights of the composers. The group raised their members' concerns to the Commission on Election and asked the poll body to help monitor campaign jingles. Music 